Hey guys, welcome back to Castle Combat TV, and in this video, I will be showing you guys all eight of the OG treasure cards. So the first card we're going to go over is the Grail of Saigon. Let's just talk about this. So drink of the Grail before battle roll for result. One, no effect. Two to four, plus one power. Five is plus two power. Six is plus three power. Grail exchange. Before battle, you can remove Grail from game and return one warrior from dungeon to field the battle. Your team up can go over power seven. Treasure cards do not count as color, so they wouldn't be yellow. And the Grail's ability cannot be negated. Team up one warrior. So... Let's talk about some treasure cards. So treasure cards, I don't think they're ever gonna come back. The Grail of Saigon, the most iconic card in the game. It's literally the center of all Castle Combat lore. The good guys are trying to protect the Grail and the bad guys are trying to take the Grail. And whoever drinks from the Grail or consumes its elixir becomes really powerful. Look at Odin King, Prince Morgan, Feral Frostbite. Whenever they drink from the Grail, they got extreme amounts of power. So that is our first treasure card. All right, so now moving on to our next treasure card. It is Margul's Mask. This is one of the more obscure ones. Team up one bad guy wizard. If you win battle, roll a die. If you're level one, then your wizard and Margul's mask are removed from game. If you're level two or higher, then you can bring back one random card from your dungeon to your hand. Your opponent shuffles your dungeon and you take the top card. So Margul was an orange bad guy shaman or shaman. I used to have that card. I traded it to Andy. All right, so now moving on to the swords. Each castle has their own sword. So the Booga guys have one, purple, red, and what used to be green. They all have a magic sword. So for the first sword we're gonna go over, probably the most well-known is Red Razor. So Red Razor, roll two dice, choose the highest. If you roll a six and you auto win the battle. If you roll double sixes, remove your foe. Double ones, your knight and Red Razor are removed from game. So this is probably the most well-known one because it's linked to a very, very popular card, King Crimson. So King Crimson, we all know what he does. Gauntlet Champion just absolutely destroys everyone in Gauntlet because of that six auto win battle. All right, so I'm moving on to our next card. It is Indigo. So Indigo, the purple good guy castle sword, I guess. Um, healing power, if you win battle roll a die, you can bring back one warrior from dungeon with exact same power score from dungeon to winner. So back in the day, Whenever you would win a battle, you would not be able to bring a card right away. You would have to roll and actually match a power or go equal or lower. So luckily, that's no longer the case because if you win a battle, you deserve to bring a card without having any more caveats or any more luck because you just won a battle straight through luck. So you guys might know who has Indigo right now. Obviously, it's King Morgan. So the backstory behind this is the purple good guys, they completely lost Indigo back in like age two in a battle over here in the bog or the curse bog. So... Prince Morgan, he took an oath. Once he's able to recover the long lost sword of the Purple Good Guy Castle, he would become king. And recently in the Tower War, Fenmeyer actually found the sword in the bog. He gave it to Boglord. Then Boglord wanted to defend his tower for Morgana. So he gave the sword to the Purple Bad Guys who are located like over here. And then the Purple Bad Guys were helping Boglord defeat Morgana. So kind of like an alliance. That was the whole Tower War, I believe two years ago. But once Prince Morgan found out that Indigo was found, he decided to mobilize his armies. But now King Morgan does have Indigo. He didn't kill Mordred since Mordred is his cousin. He didn't want to murder him. He just basically defeated him and then Mordred had to give up the sword. So that's the story of Indigo and the backstory so far. And now moving on to our next card, let's do Blue Bolt. The ancient sword of the blue castle. Before battle, say Blue Bolt, if you're all higher than your foe's power, they are frozen and half their power rounded up. Treasure cards do not count as color, can't be negated. And the warrior that has Blue Bolt right now is General Iceheart. Pretty underrated card in my opinion. Epic battle, you can arrange one matchup in epic battle, even if you didn't call it. Blue Bolt plus versus common foes, this sword's ability cannot be negated. So there isn't any established lore between these two. I'm just assuming since General Iceheart was a good guy, I think he had the sword and when Phil Frostbite woke him from his tomb, he just had Blue Bolt in his tomb with him. So General Iceheart was resurrected with the sword. And so that is Blue Bolt. Moving on to our next sword, it is Emerald. So Emerald, very cool card. Team up one good knight. When battling dragons, roll two dice and choose the highest. If you roll doubles, add them together. So the ancient elven blade of the Green Castle. So not many people know this. The Green Castle used to be here, but when Nightshade poisoned King Rigel, or I think it was King Rigel the sixth or seventh, he kicked out the Green Good Guys and they had to flee to the Mosswood. And that is where Sir Tavish with Emerald defeated Mossmog. So if you guys look at the old H3 map, right here, Mossmog used to rule this area. But when the good guys or the green good guys flee to the Mosswood, they had to take Mossmog out and Sir Tavish, the Emerald Avenger, plus one versus dragons and legendary foes. If facing a dragon, roll two dice, doubles add together plus your power. Before battle, you can search your foes deck for dragon to battle. So basically a dragon killer. And also for those who are unfamiliar, this Sir Tavish is somewhat new, but before Sir Tavish, there was the Green Knight, which is kind of like the same thing. But 
what I wanted to do. I knew this card existed, so when I made Sir Tavish, I wanted to fuse the Emerald ability with Sir Tavish and make him really effective for taking out like Onyx the third because he can search the deck, bring out Onyx. So that is Emerald. Now moving on to our last two treasure cards, we're gonna talk about the Inferno Sword. So the Inferno Sword, not much lore, but this card is actually really, really difficult to get. It's probably the rarest out of all of the treasure cards. Before battle, declare that you're erupting. Your knight doubles his power for this battle, but he and Inferno Sword get removed from game after battle, win, lose, or tie. Sword was created by Volatile, the ancient spirit that was in here, power two. I'm pretty sure he has like a roll two dice ability or something like that, but Inferno Sword, really cool card. And the card that has Inferno Sword now is King Inferno. So King Inferno, one of the best cards in the game, in my opinion, epic battle, Inferno Sword and Wrath of the Volcano. Roll two dice in battle, doubles add together. So basically a Saga Surge, plus one versus Legends, and he can double his power, but he's removed from game after. So I fuse Sir Inferno and Inferno Sword together. So King Inferno, Inferno Sword, match made in heaven. Now moving on to our last card or last treasure card, probably the most interesting one. It is Curse. so Curse. If you win battle versus a good guy, then you can remove them from the game along with the Kurs sword. Eclipse created the sword, that spirit that's power zero, roll three dice, choose one as your power. Eclipse is responsible for a lot of the chaos in cast combat. She corrupted Morgana at a very young age, and we all know what Morgana has done. She's gone after the grail like five, six times. The sword that Eclipse created, Kurs, was responsible for the Bad Sir Drake saga. A really significant event in Castle Combat lore. So Bad Sir Drake, before battle, if you roll six, if Rose removed, you convince him to rebel against his army, plus one versus knight. So normally the person that wields Kurz is the Black Knight. So the Black Knight, common foes are minus one power. Before battle, you can search your deck for Kurz and place it in hand. Black Knight, Sir Dread. So Sir Dread, he no longer exists. I'm pretty sure the Black Knight is just Sir Malice. There's a reason why I haven't fused Kurz's ability with a Black Bag Eye Knight, kind of like what I did with King Inferno um, and Inferno Sword and Emerald and Sir Tavish. I haven't fused the cards yet. The Black Baggers are already super strong. They don't need any buffs, but maybe if the good guys start to get a little better, maybe I'll give Kurz to Morgulis, Romulus. Just imagine that. Romulus, one of the best cards in the game already, a general, and he's able to remove good guys from game if he wins. So we will see Kurz in the future. All right, so that's basically everything I have to say. Keep in mind, it's probably Thursday when you're seeing this. There'll be one more video coming out tomorrow, and then that is it for, I'd say, a month or two. So, um, yeah, that's basically everything I have to say. Make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.